it's Dr. Sandra V. And I want to personally thank you for joining in to the Lift broadcast today. Come on and join me and let's lift up the name of our Lord. Let's exalt his word. Allow our hearts and minds to be lifted through practical Bible teaching, life coaching skills, prayer, and praise. Come on in now and join me and get lifted. Hi, it's Dr. Sandra V, and I want to welcome you back to the Lift Broadcast. Man, we have been having a fantastic time just dining on the Word of God. We've been teaching on um, how to handle when your courage is under fire. And we left off in the last show talking about Job and all that he experienced when his courage came under fire and how he did not um, sin nor did he charge God foolishly because of what he was experiencing. But I told you as we were closing out we were going to go on to chapter 2, Job chapter 2, because the test is not over yet. So he's lost at this point. He's lost all of his wealth. He's lost all of his children to tragedy. And, uh, and, and the enemy is not finished yet. But we left off with him tearing his garment and falling down on his face and worshiping the Lord. So let's pray. Father, thank you for another opportunity to dine on the good word of God. You're so good, so good and so awesome. And we thank you for this time together. Bless as the word goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So let's pick right up in Job 2 uh, and 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And I told you in, in our former broadcast that the sons of God here are referring to angels who are coming to give account. And here Satan steps up in the midst of them because you know he's an angel of light. All right. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So we said that First Peter reiterates what the book of Job says, that our adversary, the devil, goes forth as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. All right. In verse 3, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and eschews evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Listen to what the Lord says about he's further bragging on Job. So we established in the last teaching that God knew Satan had been watching Job because God had watched Satan watched Job. And Satan himself gave himself away because he says back to the Lord, you know, you have a hedge around him. You know, so he had surveilled the man's life, surveyed the man's life, looking for ways to get in and get at him. But God had hedged him in. And he said, you know, you've blessed the works of his hands. But if you touch all that he have, he'll curse you to your face. And so God allowed uh, Satan he said, all that he has is in your power. Because you have to understand, Satan is the god of this world system. He's the god of the cosmos. So the Lord said, all that he has is in your hand, but you can't touch the man. You can't have the man. You can't have his soul. All right? So Satan leaves the presence of the Lord, and these horror, horrific things begin to happen in Job's life. Before one messenger can finish telling of a calamity, another messenger shows up to tell him a further calamity, all the way to the point of his him losing his children from a whirlwind. But over here, you know, here he the angels are, they're giving an account again, and Satan steps up in the midst of them, and God asks him again, where have you been? And he says, I've been walking up and down in the earth, you know, and, um, and he says, have you been considering my servant Job? In other words, I know that you're still checking him out. With all the damage that's been done, you're still checking him out. 
and I shared in the last broadcast and I encourage you to go over there and watch it because I can't spend a lot of time on this but I shared that everything that you do for the cause of Christ it creates a hedge in your life and this is why the attacks came at Job in stages so here we're getting ready to see some more stages that you know uh, that he's getting ready to attack this man so look at this again he the Lord in verse 3 the Lord asked him where have you been and he said have you considered my servant Job there's none like him in the earth perfect upright fears God avoids evil and look at this and still I wonder can God say that about us in the midst of our trials in the midst of our tribulation can he say that about you and I beloved that he's still holding fast his integrity because the man didn't sin he he lamented he wailed he cried listen he cursed the day he was born he cursed his mother wombs womb he cursed his father's loins you know but he didn't curse God he cursed the day he was born he lamented the day he was born but he would not utter anything foolish toward the Lord so God said he's still holding fast his integrity beloved somebody who's watching this um, this broadcast you may have been being tested for some long period of time you may be dealing with manifold temptations manifold testings at the same time you're dealing with different things look like you put out one fire and another one starts I wonder can God say about us today that we are still holding fast our integrity man what a testimony coming straight from God Almighty it says he still holds fast his integrity although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause in other words he didn't he didn't deserve what has came at him but God knew Job and Job knew his God and God knew Job's threshold for pain and he knew Job's threshold for faith and this was something I specifically inquired of the Lord to know why this thing was permitted and God and this was God's answer back to me so I'm sure that now that we are being informed others will begin to share and teach this so look at this it says in verse 4 and Satan answered the Lord and said skin for skin look at this look at this conversation skin for skin yea all that a man hath will he give for his life in other words yes I've touched his money yes I've touched his children look at this he said but skin for skin he said let me move in closer on him let it let me get closer up on him see this speaks to the different hedges that I was talking to you about and this is why again the attacks came in stages it says skin for skin all that a man hath will he give for his life but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face and the Lord said unto Satan behold he is in your hand but save his life so in other words you know he's getting ready to be afflicted now if it wasn't bad enough he's gone bankrupt all of his heirs are gone uh, and now his health is failing it says um, so Satan went in verse 7 Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord look and smote Job with sore boils <coughs> from the sole of his foot unto his crown so his entire body is covered in boils you know boils are blisters if you've ever burnt yourself and you see that blister that comes up afterwards and it's full of you know pus and so he's covered from head to toe in these boils look at this and so and you know those boils are sore so how are you gonna turn how are you gonna sit how are you gonna lay how are you gonna walk if it's on the soles of your feet you know sometimes we read the Bible as if it's fairy tale stories that happen to the people in the Bible these stories are real beloved they live these things and they're given as our examples and in samples so that we know that there are others who these types of things have happened to them and God was with them and God delivered them and God healed them and, and restored them so it says from his foot unto his crown and he took it was so bad it says he took um, pot shirt and he took you know pieces of clay to scrape himself and it says and he sat down among the ashes ashes because it soothed it soothed the boils my 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 
Look at this. But it, it doesn't stop here. Now he's getting ready to have marital problems. It says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain your integrity? He's, she's like, You're still holding on to a God who has allowed all of this to happen to you? You still holding on to your integrity? She said, Why don't you curse God and die? Uh, but he said unto her, You speak as one of the foolish women speak. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall not we receive evil? In all this did Job not sin with his lips. And it's not finished there. Because now he's got to deal with all of his friends who want to know, what did you do that caused God, that caused your life to be in such a mess? But listen, what his wife was saying, man, listen. What his wife was, you know, she had become upset because you have to understand Job was her husband Job was her head head of the household you know they're tied together by covenant and anything that's happening to him is happening to her so all her wealth is gone too all of her children she's lamenting her children they're gone bankrupt <laughs> no money children gone you know all of their heirs are gone and now you sick on top of it all, now you're sick in your body. You're going to still maintain your integrity. Why don't you curse God so let's get this over with. In other words, I'm going through this because I'm connected to you. And if you curse God and die, then perhaps I'll be free from this. Perhaps I'll be free and I can go on with my life. So the enemy now has is, is riding her and getting in her ear and getting in her heart to, you know, if, if he couldn't turn anywhere else to look for some sort of consolation, now his life partner is now saying, why don't you curse God and die? Because really what she wants is deliverance from the trial. Woo! Who did that help right there? She wants deliverance for the trial. So now she's losing her loyalty. Mm, mm, mm. She was with him when he was up. My God today. My God today. But now she's saying curse God and die. Well, I understand. She's mourning. She's in grief. But the enemy is using her too. Curse God and die. Because you got to remember this was the challenge. This was the challenge. This is what Satan was after. Was to get the man to denounce his God. To renounce his God. This was the very thing. If you, you know, skin for skin. If you touch his flesh and bones, he'll curse you to your face. So she comes right around with the word of the enemy in her mouth and says, why don't you curse God and die? Help me, Jesus. My, 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 my. So now he's having marital problems. Look at verse 11. Now when Job's three friends heard all of this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, it says, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off, they didn't even recognize him. He was in such bad shape. You got to understand he's mourning. He's bankrupt. Now he's sick in his body and having marital problems. It says they lifted up their voice and wept. They rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. And none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. And, and they sat with him, but eventually if you read, continue to read the book of Job, you'll see where they began to question him. Listen, he couldn't give an explanation. He couldn't give an explanation for what he was going through. Let me talk to some child of God today. Perhaps you're dealing with something you can't even explain how you got into it, why it happened, why it's lasted so long. You've run out of reasons that you have given to try to defend your faith and defend God and defend your righteous standard or your character. And perhaps people are looking and they're, they're speculating and they're wondering what in the world has gone wrong that this has been being permitted to happen in your life. You can't even explain it. And I want to encourage you, stop trying to explain it. Stop trying to explain it. And I say that because I appreciate the fact that this book 
starts out by saying this man was a righteous man who feared God, who avoided evil. But this happened to him. Someone watching this broadcast, you are going through some things that you cannot explain. You can't, you done tried to track, you done tried to trace it, you tried to figure it out, where you went wrong, what wrong turn, what wrong decision, what did you do to deserve this or that? Stop it. Stop beating yourself up. Life has happened. I encourage you. I've been in places like that. I've languished like that. Listen, you can't explain it. Don't even try to explain it. Your job right now is to come through it. <laughs> Who am I talking to? You're fighting right now to stay in the earth. You're fighting with all you have just to stay in the earth, to maintain your integrity. You cannot afford to spend yourself trying to explain to other people what is happening in your life. Humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, under the dealings of God, and God will exalt in due season. Listen, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Cast your cares on the Lord because your courage is under fire. It, you know, it's being hurled in every from every direction. Sometimes you can get to a place you don't know who's with you. You don't know who's against you. You can't tell if it's divine or demonic. You don't even know the source of the trouble anymore. You can be perplexed. You can be worn down, frustrated, tired, weary, and doing well. Listen, God is with you. God has not left you. God has not forgotten about you. Job kneeled. He lamented, he grieved, he wept, but he worshiped. He lamented, he grieved, he wept, but he worshiped. He worshiped and he didn't sin and he didn't charge God foolishly. He had to trust in the God that he knew. It was something about God's integrity that Job understood that was able to sustain him. It was something about that bond, that relationship that he knew. He knew his God and he knew God would sustain him. He didn't understand, I'm sure, why these things had happened because he didn't hear the conversation that had taken place concerning him. But if you go ahead on and read the story, you find out that after all had happened, you know, he said, in, in some place he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him and I will maintain my integrity before him. You know, all of these things. He says, all the appointed days of my life, I will wait until my change come and I will maintain my integrity before him. And so, you know, as you go on to read it, you know, him and God had conversations. Him and his friends had conversations. But at the end, the Lord healed him. The Lord blessed him. He restored him double for all that he had lost. He, he, God restored him double. My, 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 my. So where Satan, you know, meant it for evil, it turned out for the man's good. He languished. He was in extreme pressure, extreme pain. It was a horrific experience for him. But in the end, he got double. He got double. Thank God he didn't curse God and die. Thank God that he didn't charge God foolishly. Though he lamented and the Lord blessed him. So listen, we're talking about how to handle when your courage is under fire. 1 Peter 5 and 9, I'm going to read it again. It says, Whom resist steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We have to resist in faith. We have to stand in a place of faith. So now I'm going to go over to Ephesians chapter 6. 
Ephesians chapter 6. I'm not sure how much more time I have with you, but I at least want to be able to read it. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, very familiar, very familiar discourse of scripture when you're talking about your courage being under fire. Um, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, it says this. It says, uh, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Whose might? God's might. So we have to stand in faith, but we have to stand in the strength of God, not our own strength. All right? Um, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This word wiles is the word schemes. It's the word methods. Uh, his ways of doing, his MO, that you can stand against the schemes and the methods of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, uh, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. This is why operating in truth is so important. Dealing in truth, speaking truth, um, living in truth, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Because, you know, truth, truth girds us. When you talk about your loins, it represents the core of who you are. So at the core of us, we have to live in truth, deal in truth, walk in truth, worship in spirit and in truth. At the core of us, all right? It says, um, stand having your loins girt about with truth, having on what the breastplate of righteousness, not our own righteousness, but the righteousness that we receive through our faith in Jesus Christ. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're supposed to be promoters of peace as much as, as, we, as we are able to. All right, above all, in verse 16, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So it lets us know that he's, you know, he's constantly sending these barrage of fiery darts. But our faith has the power to put the fire out. Our faith has the power to extinguish the darts that he shoots at us coming from all different directions. That shield of faith is there to block and stop and put those fires out. And then it says, um, and take the helmet of salvation, which is hope. All right. The home helmet of salvation is hope. It's the hope of glory. Hope is our anchor, beloved. Um, the helmet of salvation it says and the sword of the spirit so the hope of that you are saved the hope that you are being saved the hope that you shall be saved that God would never leave you and never forsake you that he's the saving strength of his anointed all right um, the, the helmet of salvation and then it says the sword of the spirit which is the word of God knowing the word of God listen teaching the word of God and teaching it right it's it can be painstaking and so one of the one of the things that i do one of my responsibilities is is to create a cavity to create carve out a cavity in people so that they have the capacity and the depth for the word of god for the meat of the word of god so that we graduate from the milk and we're on the meat and we have the capacity to handle the word of god all right um so knowing the word of god and knowing how to properly use it and then 18 praying always with all prayer supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto having perseverance and supplication for all the saints so when we talk about our courage being under fire we have to be you know it's the armor of god that equips us and then it's the prayer life that keeps it active and keeps the armor sharp and working for us and so listen our time has gotten away from us i i pray that this has blessed you that this has helped you and when we come together again um I, I hope to finish up talking about 
what to do when your courage is under fire. I've got much more to share with you. In the meantime, I want to pray with you. And also, I invite you to visit our website at sandravministries.org. We have products there. You can become a vision partner. You can leave your prayer request. And you can also sow a seed that will help to empower the ministry. All right. And, and I know you can't be God's giving and you won't miss it if you will sow that seed. All right. So let's pray. Father, thank you for these that I have had the opportunity to connect with through this broadcast, to touch and agree, and to share the word of God. I thank you for encouraging the hearts of your people, Father. Touch those that may be going through a Job-type experience. Their courage may be under fire. They may be experiencing the fiery darts of the enemy. But we thank you for the whole armor of God. It's active and it's operative, Father, and it's working in our behalf. And we are victorious and we are triumphant in Christ Jesus. We are not victims. We are the victors. And we thank you that you are going to cause us to be strong and of a good courage, Father. And you're going to strengthen each and every one of our hearts. And we bless you and we receive that strength right now. And we receive that courage and we receive that encouragement right now in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we give you glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you over in the next broadcast where we're going to continue talking about what to do when your courage is under fire. As always, I love you with the love of the Lord and we look forward to seeing you real soon. Don't forget to visit that website and give that gift. SandraVMinistries.org. See you soon. Hi, it's Sandra V, your personal life coach, and I'm here to remind you that when we're working together, I take into consideration where you are in life, where you want to go. We incorporate a workable plan with some accountability to help you reach your goals. So give me a call and let's get coaching. Thank you for tuning into the Live Broadcast. Join our vision partners and be connected as Dr. Sandra V shares the gospel around the globe. Give today on the website at sandravministries.org or mail into P.O. Box 847, Pomona, California, 91769. Browse our online store and continue to get lifted with essential teachings, products, services, and upcoming events.